Hi everyone, David Payne with Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC. Today we're going to talk about some very exciting news. Today we're going to talk through how to take and convert your AS3X receiver into an AS3X Plus receiver. All of the new technology and exciting features that are coming out with AS3X Plus you can now have in your smaller stabilized receivers. So we'll discuss the items you need to do this conversion. First off, you're going to need to uh, download the Spectrum Programmer and or update your Spectrum Programmer if you already have it on your PC. Also, you're going to need your updater cable, which is the SPMA3065, or for the 10360, you just need a data capable USB cable. And then you need the receiver that you're gonna use. So the receivers that are currently capable of doing this update are the AR631, the 630, 637 T and TA, the 8360 or the 10360. Any of those receivers are applicable and can be converted from AS3X to AS3X Plus. Okay, a few notes. As we go through this video, I'm going to refer to the uh, initial or original AS3X firmware as 2X firmware, and then the AS3X Plus firmware as 3X firmware. And you'll see that even the uh, conversion notes that we have are 2X to 3X conversion notes. So, Anything you see like that is referring to AS3X to AS3X Plus. So as we go through this, there's a few things to note about this conversion. For one, once you've done this conversion, there is no going back. Once you have updated your receiver to AS3X Plus, you cannot revert back. In that specific receiver, you cannot revert back to AS3X. Also, there is going to be a, a large amount of data. If you uh, need more information and more help with this, we are gonna have a wiki page specifically to this conversion that will be uh, available and we'll put a link down here so you can see that. Another note is this conversion uh, for all of the receivers except for the 10360 is a two-step process, but that's a only one time that it requires that two-step process. And that's a conversion and then loading the firmware itself. For the 10360, it will do both at once. But for any of the other receivers, you'll have to go and do the actual conversion and then we'll go through and load the firmware itself. Another note, once you have done this, unfortunately, you will have to go back and re-fly your model. You will have to set it back up. The conversion itself will hold your initial model file, but it will always be the initial older AS3X model file. It won't have the features and it will not fly with the new stabilization system of AS3X Plus. You will have to do a factory reset and fly your model again to get all of the features and ability from the AS3X Plus side of things. Um, but fortunately, the newer side of things is extremely quick and fast to set up and do your first time flights. Within one to two flights, you can have this set up and enjoying your model. All right, we've gone through the notes, we've gone through the items that you need. So now we will go to the programmer and we can do a conversion and walk you through it step by step. Okay, so we've got the Spectrum Programmer open. Um, a few notes for the Spectrum Programmer, just a few items you may wanna be aware of. So on the help side of things, you can actually drop that bar down and it will show you the current version you're on. Um, as we have taped this video, the version that you should be on is 3.8.12, and uh, we can put a link down in the description for that. Also, you need to make sure that you are logged into the programmer itself. Uh, that, that will make your life a whole lot easier. It actually, once you've logged into it with your Spectrum account, it will register the receiver for you if you've never done that, so that'll keep you up to date for any future updates that we have. Uh, it makes life real easy when you do that. So please make sure that you've, uh, if you don't have a Spectrum account, you can go to the Spectrum website and create one. But once you've done that, just log in with that same account here and it will allow you to uh, register your receiver from you. Okay, so at the top right here of the programmer app, you'll notice that it says no device connected. This is always a really, really good place to check and look to make sure that you have a connection not only with your PC, but your receiver. So I'm going to plug in the updater cable because we're gonna be updating the 637 receiver. And you'll see that now that I've plugged in the cable, it has noted that and it says cable connected. So we're good there. Now we're gonna plug in the receiver itself. That goes into the programming port. And so from here, you have a couple different options on how to power the receiver. If you are uh, updating a receiver that's in a model, normally it's probably best if you power that through the ESC or the receiver battery, whatever you currently use to power the aircraft because the servos are in there drawing a load also. But if you're doing what we're doing here with the uh, receiver on the bench with nothing plugged in, you can power it from the updater itself. So if you hit power cable, it'll give you a secondary checkbox there, hit power cable again. 
And you'll notice now at the top right, it says cable and device connected. So we know for sure that we have a link between the PC and the receiver itself. And you'll also notice that we have a model mismatch box now. So what this is, is if you've never plugged this receiver into the app at all, you're gonna get this, which is, it's asking you what you want to do, whether or not you want to take the information from the receiver and put it in the PC, or if you wanna take the information from the PC and put it in the receiver. You also could, if you want to, you have a drop down box here. You can select a different model that you wanna transfer data to or from, but for now we're gonna stick with the new model and we're gonna say use device settings. It really didn't matter at this point because this is an open stock receiver and we didn't have any data in it. But now we have a model set up and we're ready to go, we're ready to do the actual update. Um, so over here at the top left, we have a software update tab. And you'll notice from here that it shows you what receiver, the serial number, and what software version it's on. Um, also, you'll note here that as I mentioned earlier, right, once you're logged in, this app will, uh, this app will automatically update your receiver for you. So if you hit check for update, it's first gonna note that you, this receiver is not registered to anyone right now. So you can put a nickname in here. I usually put in whatever airplane we're using at the time, but you can put a nickname in here for your receiver so you can track it later and just hit register device. And now the device itself is registered into the Spectrum account in your name. So everything is done super simple, super quick. And now you can get any information or future updates for that receiver. So now you'll note that we are on uh, 246 on this current receiver, um, which is an AS3X firmware. So you'll note here that it says you have a newer version of 2X code that you could go to. So if you wanted to, you could update to that. But for today, we're actually wanting to do AS3X Plus. So we're gonna go from there. So if we hit install another version, you'll see here that there is a conversion firmware to go from 2X to 3X. You also have all your previous firmware versions or options. Uh, a couple notes to this is there's always a lot of information in here. If you click on these, you'll note that there's there's always a lot of information on the changes that we've done according to that version of firmware. Um, so there's just a lot of data in here if you ever want to really get into the updates and specifics of what each one has been done. But for now, we're just going to run the conversion firmware. This is going to take us from AS3X to AS3X Plus. Again, note that once you've ran this, you cannot go backwards on that receiver for that. It will always be an AS3X Plus receiver. But I highly encourage you to do that because AS3X Plus is just a, it's a great experience. It's a it's a very improved experience over anything in the past. So we're gonna hit update here. This is the first step in the two steps that we spoke of. And that is done. So now up here at the top, you're gonna to note that it's gonna to change to 3X. And currently there's only one version of 3X available, 3.13. And so we're going to hit install there. And again, it's gonna give you all the information and all the new features and updates that you're gonna get with this for ASRX Plus. And so we're gonna hit update and we're gonna update the device. So once this update is completed, now this open stock receiver is ready to go because it didn't have any information in it when we started. It will immediately give you all of the AS3X Plus features and options, um, all of the new information in forward programming and new uh, settings that you could change in forward programming will be there start from the start. Um, if you've done this, now that you've, you've done the update, it's gonna say, model mismatch again. The reason it says that now is because this is a completely different model than what we initially saved. It is now a 3X version or AS3X plus version of that same model that we originally had is an AS3X version. So we're gonna hit use device settings on a new model. And here in the model side, now you can see that we have model three. That is the 3X or AS3X plus version of this model. At this point in time, if you had already had data in this receiver, you could go in here and you could hit edit and you can name this, you know, whatever it was at the time. Just so that you have a copy, just in case you ever want to revert back to that. Now, please note that if you ever reverted back to this copy, it will fly still as an AS3X model. It would not show you the options or features. It would only show you AS3X options. To do an AS3X Plus receiver, if you had already had information in that receiver, you must do a factory reset. So we can walk you through that next on a transmitter. We can show you the factory reset and how quick it is to do a first time setup on that receiver and uh, to go do your first initial flights. Uh, it's really quick, really simple to kind of reset this and start over and get all of the new features and benefits from AS3X Plus.
Now that the receiver is up to date, we're ready to do a factory reset if needed and get it set up in your model for the first time. If you've had this receiver, if you had any previous data in this receiver when it was an AS3X receiver, whether that be a bind and fly model or a model that you created yourself, we will need to perform a factor reset on that receiver to get all of the new features and benefits from AS3X Plus. So we'll go through that, we'll go through a factor reset, and then we'll go through a first time setup for you, which is super quick and fast, and we'll get you set back up and ready to go experience and enjoy AS3X Plus. So first off, when we go into here, uh, another quick note before we get into this is please make sure that you've also updated your transmitter. There are a lot of uh, features and benefits coming from the new updates that we just announced for these transmitters. And it, it is needed for the transmitter to be updated also, not just the receiver. So make sure you've updated your transmitter. Currently, uh, we're gonna use an NX8 for this. And it is on the latest update that we also announced with the update for the receivers. So a lot of new features coming from this. We'll go down and we'll go into forward programming. So. Uh, a note about forward programming, just in case, just a quick note for this, is if your receiver is not on and bound to this transmitter, bound to this model, forward programming won't show up in your transmitter. So if you're ever looking for forward programming and you can't find it, it might just be because the receiver has to be on before this, before this option will show up in your transmitter. So click forward programming. Now you'll note down here at the bottom, it shows that it's the AR637T that we just updated and it's now on the correct version of firmware. So from here, we're gonna go into uh, the other settings. Now, if you are starting from a bind and fly model or a safe select model, some of these menus might look slightly different, um, but the uh, information on them and getting to them would be the same. From here, you may only see one that says show advanced menus and safe select. If you'll click the inhibit button, it will now show you these other settings and you can go from there. But so this is a model that we just did, which is a bench setup model. So we're gonna click on other settings. And now you're gonna see that you have a few different options here, but the one we're looking for is the factory reset. Um, another quick note while we're in here that's a pretty neat feature before we do this factory reset is if you wanted to and you wanted to save, so say this was a custom file that you made on AS3X and you wanted to save that just in case as a backup, right here you could go to save to backup and use this option first. If you use this option, what it's going to do is it just saved a backup of your model file, the AS3X model file, or in the future it would be an AS3X Plus model file, but for now it saved a backup copy of your original model. Um, when we do this factory reset, it will not write or it will not wipe that out. That backup will stay there. So once you've done the factory reset, if you go fly the model and you go, you know what, I need to go back because the settings, I, I like my older settings better, I need to refer to them to see kind of where some of the things were, you could always go back and use the restore from backup and get back to that. And that works at any time. So in the future, if you save one and you have this perfect model and you wanna make sure you keep a copy of that, you could actually hit save to backup and that copy will be saved in your receiver and then you can you know, kind of fine tune it even more. And if you don't like it, always you can go back. So factory reset, we're gonna hit this. What that's gonna do is, is since this was initially an AS3X model file, using the factory reset button is going to give us the new options of AS3X Plus. So we're gonna run the factory reset. We're gonna hit apply there. Okay, so from that, when you do a factory reset, it's going to make you do a rebind. It's gonna automatically put the receiver itself into bind mode. It's already there, it's already ready to go, it's already flashing. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna go down here to bind and hit yes. Again, that's normal, that is standard operation. So when you do a factory reset, it's going to put the receiver into bind mode. going to let it finish its bind here. And once it's finished, it will be ready to go. So now we'll go back into forward programming. And from there, you'll note that now when we go into gyro settings, it's going to do your first time setup. So this is, uh, this is going to walk you through your first time setup since this is now basically a fresh receiver. So we're going to click on that. And so a few, a few notes, right? It's going to make sure that you have uh, set up the model correctly, whether that be travel, trims, reversing, sub trims, anything like that. You want to make sure that's all that's done. So if you've ever flown your model before, that's great. But if you're setting up a brand new model, please make sure that all of that is set up first. Do all your transmitter set up first because the receiver and the, the stabilization system is learning every bit of that and adjusting accordingly around that. So please make sure that that's all done before you do run through this first time setup. So we'll go next here. 
Again, it's just going through some of the things that need to be set up and make sure they're done before you do this. Next here. So from here, you have two options. Um, for smaller aircraft, it's kind of a neat new option that we have, which is it will set the orientation for you if you go through these two steps, uh, which is setting the model level. Now level, um, whether that be a, say a nose gear or a tail dragger model, there is a window built into that. So just set the model on the table um, and it will note that as the first part of the orientation process. And then the next screen, it would say, put the model on its nose. And once you hold it on its nose and hit next here, that will set the orientation for you. Or you can do it manually, which you can just run through each one. So for this, we're gonna say set manually. And you can see here, you can see on the screen that there's the receiver and your aircraft. Um, currently, the antennas are facing forward and the plugs are facing back in the aircraft. But if you needed to change that, you can roll through all of these and do anything you need to do. Um, just make sure you set that appropriately and hit continue. And so from here, you're just gonna set up a gain channel. This is your primary flight gains. It will control uh, initially all three axes. Uh, you can independently set all that later on if you want to, but for first time setup and for very quick setups, just to get you flying and really get you enjoying the, the, the features and benefits of AS3X Plus, one gain channel is likely all you're gonna need. So if you select the gain channel, this is a pretty neat feature also if you've never assigned whatever you're gonna to use to adjust your gains in the transmitter yet, you can actually do that from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to gain channel and say for instance, we wanted to use the knob, which is the roller knob, which is probably the most optimal way to do gains at first. So you can kind of roll them on and off and kind of find where you want them to be. But you could use trimmers, you could use sliders. It really is just a personal preference as to what you like to use. But say we wanted to use the, the uh, knob and we wanted to use that knob on uh, channel 11 here, aux six. If we go down, we can roll down to aux six and select that. And then if you select the inputs, and if you just reach up and roll that knob, it will assign that knob to aux six now. So now you've assigned that switch to that channel and you're ready to go. So you hit next again, and then we're gonna hit apply. And that's it. You've done all of your first time setup. The aircraft is now completely done and ready to go. You can go fly. Uh, another cool feature about this that you may want to check out is if you go into gyro settings and then you go into system setup and you go into utilities. From here, if you click on this gyro response test, while that gyro response test is on, you can actually take the model and you can rotate it left and right, up and down and y'all, and you can check your gyro functions are responding correctly. It's always a good thing to do before you do your first flights but this makes it really easy to check because it's automated to, it's always on. It's, it's you know, normally with, with gyro response, you kind of just barely can tell that it's moving. This is uh, basically heading hold. So it's, it's, it's making very large movements to show you which way the gyro is responding and correcting for. So it's a really easy way to check your gyro response. And when you're done with that, you just back out of it and it will clear out and you're ready to go. So from here forward, you are ready to go. Your aircraft is set up. You're ready to go fly for the first time with ASRX Plus and enjoy your airplane.